Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And thank you for joining me for step number two. We are converting the daisy to a cross. This is how we're going to do it. Our daisy is a cross in the shape of a plus. And what's different about this and the cross is that the daisy has a center piece that is different than the edge pieces. The edge pieces that are on the east, west, north, and south are going to be the same. However, the center sticker is going to be different. How do we convert this to the cross? This is the purpose of step two. The goal of step two is to convert the daisy to the cross. We're going to first look for our edge pieces from the out, outward facing side. And I'm going to rotate the upper face clockwise or counterclockwise so that the outward facing sticker of our two-sided edge piece is going to match the center of an outward facing side. Here I have a front face where my top button in position number 8 of a numerical keyboard is matching to a button on a numerical keyboard pad number 5. Now, what I'm going to do is take it from the top face to the bottom face. This means I'm rotating my front face twice, clockwise or counterclockwise, so that I can take it from the top and drop it down to the bottom. Now my edge piece on the bottom matches the center piece. I'm going to repeat this step all around. Here is an edge piece on the top floor, the third upper face, that matches the center piece of an outward facing side. This means I have button number eight and button number five on my new front face, that is matching. Again, I'm going to take this front face and rotate it twice so that I now have an edge piece that is matching to the bottom face as well as to the front face. I will repeat this process two more times because what I'm doing is making sure that my bottom cross has the four edge pieces to it. Once it's in place, in position, I don't need to rotate or move my edge piece. Again, I'm going to take my upper face and rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise until my outward facing non-bottom sticker is matching to an outward facing side, which would be the front side. Here we have an edge piece that's matching. Position number eight of that same face and button number five are matching. And I'm going to again twist and rotate my front, new front side twice so that I have another edge piece brought down to the bottom. And as a result, I have another side, again, if I rotate my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise, until I rotate and match my button number eight, which is part of the top third floor, to match button number five. I'm going to drop it directly from the top to the bottom by rotating my front face twice. And this is the goal of step five. We have the center piece matching the edge pieces. Now I have five pieces on this face that are matching. The difference between the cross and the daisy is that the daisy has a different sticker. And in order for us to consider it to be a daisy, we need to make sure that our center sticker has the same color or texture as the opposite face center piece, which would be this one right here. The two opposing faces are always related to each other, and this is important for us to solve the entire cube. I hope you enjoy making this and practicing this step, and I'll see you next time. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. We will be discussing step number two of how to solve the Rubik's Cube, and this is the CFOB method which is the original method that has been known pretty much since the Rubik's Cube was invented. And the CFOB method stands for using the cross, creating the cross on the bottom, then using the idea of solving for the first floor, then orientation and permutation. So that's CFOP, okay? Step number one, was about creating the daisy. And then step number two is about converting that daisy into a cross. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We are focusing on creating 
the cross on the bottom. Before we get there, I'd like to focus on a couple of important ideas that will be very helpful in solving the cube. The first concept is that the cube is essentially a three-layered structure. Imagine that it is a building that has a first floor, then of course our second floor, and the top floor, the penthouse. That will be very helpful. Also, it might be helpful to think that the bottom floor has maybe a front door, a window, anything along those lines for you to imagine that we first need to solve the foundation of our building before we continue with the other layers, which is the second and third floor. And of course, our pretend building is also going to have a roof. In fact, this roof will have our pretend shingles and we will be solving those later on in steps five and six especially, okay? The other thing to keep in mind is that the cube is a solvable puzzle. It's something that anyone can do. Whether you have vision or not, my cube has stickers to it for the, purposes of, for the purpose of having tactile experience so that I can feel the stickers and tell the difference. So it doesn't matter what color they are. So if we have flat stickers, it doesn't matter what that color is since I need tactile experience. Here is an example of using Velcro stickers, which are rough. Then we've got some rubber pieces that are sort of um, little bump pads. Uh, anything that feels like a stone is helpful. Uh, here is a sticker that is often used underneath the glass tabletop of a coffee table or a glass tabletop. That's why these are clear, but because they have a wonderful texture of being smooth, it's another texture that we can use to solve the cube. Now that I've mentioned to you that we can also use different stickers, uh, tactile stickers. Let me just mention that if you are having any difficulty with color, perhaps if your color bar aligned to certain colors, that's not an issue. In fact, you can get stickers that uh, you can put on, flat stickers that you can put on on any surface. So keep that in mind as well, okay? Otherwise, you can certainly use any other texture just like I'm doing right now. Let me focus on one other aspect, or perhaps two, of what is important in solving the cube. We discussed the idea of it being a pretend building, a three-layered structure. And of course, as any building, a tall building would have, we would need an elevator. So we will be discussing on how to take something from the top, loading up our elevator, and moving it from the top layer to the bottom layer. So from the third floor up at the top, to the first floor. I'd like to call that the elevator move, but that's also called the trigger. And we will discuss that in step number three. One other thing to keep in mind is that the cube rotates. In other words, we're solving for the pieces, not just the stickers on one side, but we're solving for pieces. Here, for example, is a two-sided edge piece. It's got two stickers to it. I want to solve for the edge pieces so that my edge piece matches to the center sticker of both of the sides that it's affecting. In this case, it would be the front and the left. I'm sorry, it's the front and the right. <laughs> it's backwards. What we need to do is also keep in mind that by solving for pieces, when we talk about the corner piece, it has three stickers to it, three sides. So we want our corner piece, any corner piece, to be lined up in such a way eventually once it's solved so that it matches to the all three sides that it's affecting and that it matches to the center sticker of every side here i have a corner piece that matches to the top center sticker it matches to the front center sticker and it also matches to the right center sticker as well so that's my top corner piece as I've just demonstrated, we've got the two-sided edge piece and the three-sided corner piece that do move all the way around the cube. The one thing that does not move, or the one piece that doesn't move, as you can see, is the center sticker. In fact, because the center sticker does not rotate, it is essentially our piece or texture or color that will dictate the entire final color or texture of that side. Therefore, 
Rotating the cube is possible all the way around, but the edge pieces and corner pieces do move, yet the, the center pieces do not. In fact, the center pieces are attached on an axle on the inside of the frame. That's why they're stationary. And the relationship between the two opposite center pieces is important in that, since it doesn't move, those two sides are helpful in finishing our step number one, which is called the daisy, as we have done so far. Before you go on to this step, which is step number two, it is helpful to know what the daisy looks like and how it functions or what we want to do with it. So if you do know how to do the daisy, that's wonderful. However, you can also combine all the three steps together. And that means if our goal is to solve for the bottom floor, then we want to do step one, which is creating the daisy, and step number two, turning it into a cross on the bottom. And step three is about solving for the corner pieces on the bottom first floor. You can, as you become more proficient, solve all three of those steps together as long as we accomplish the idea of finishing the first bottom floor that's all that matters all right let's co let's continue with one other aspect this is going to be important as we're solving the cube and we're going to be using what's called algorithms essentially they are steps or sequence of moves in order for us to describe it and to reference it I'm going to focus on what the orientation would be. The cube has six different sides. We have a top, we have a bottom face, and then we also have the front and back, and of course our right and our left, okay? So we have an upper and a lower, and then we have outward facing sides. So when I refer to outward facing sides, it could be the front, the back, as well as the right and the left. Okay, so those are the outward facing sides. The top and the bottom are essentially the same. After we complete step number two, our bottom floor or bottom face is going to pretty much remain at the bottom for the entire solve of the cube. We will be referencing the bottom as being stationary after step two. One other thing to keep in mind is that when we are creating the daisy, we're choosing two opposite center stickers. On most cubes, yellow and white sides are on two opposing faces, which is why the center sticker that might be yellow and a center sticker that's white will be on opposite sides. And to create a daisy, we will be doing our center sticker, usually yellow, and surrounding it by four edge pieces that are white. So it will look like a pixelated version of a flower. Okay? Let's focus on the movement of the cube. This is important as I mentioned because from now on we might be using algorithms uh, or descriptions of how to rotate the cube. If you compare this face right here, let's assume this is my front face and it's got velcro sides on it. If I'm talking about the face, front face being rotated clockwise, it would be rotated just like this. It is always referred to as being rotated if you are looking at this face, front face on. So this would be my front face rotation that's clockwise on the front face. If I'm going to be talking about my right face and if I'm going to rotate it clockwise, I'm going to show you how to do that by still having the front face facing you. If I'm going to rotate my right face clockwise, I would be rotating that face, so to speak, away from me. It is relative to the perspective as though if I was looking at my right face directly on. One more time. If I'm facing, if my front face, that is the Velcro stickered side, is facing me, and I want to rotate my right side, I would be doing that with my right hand, and I would essentially be rotating the right side away from me. That would be the clockwise move. And that would be as though I would be looking at the face, this right face, directly on. So even though I'm referencing my front face to be the texture that has the Velcro, and my right side has the one that has rectangular stickers or textures, doesn't matter what color it is, this is the clockwise move or the right 
rotation for the right phase. Another way to keep in mind whether we are going to be discussing clockwise or counterclockwise moves is the way they're written down. For the front face, if we have an algorithm or a reference that simply states F, which is front, it means front is being rotated, front face is being rotated clockwise. If we have something called F prime, it means that we're rotating our front face in a counterclockwise direction, okay? So that would mean F, and this would be F prime. F prime, any prime symbol indicates that the face you're referring to just before that will be rotated in a counterclockwise direction. Here is my right side again. My right side, I have chosen it to be the square stickered, a different texture. If I'm going to perform my right move or R, it will be clockwise and therefore I will be turning my right face away from me. R prime would be taking my right face and turning it towards me with my right hand and it is relative to the perspective of that face as though if I was to look at it. So even though my front face is the velcro texture, as I'm rotating my right face clockwise, that would be away from me. And R prime would mean right face is being rotated counterclockwise, which is towards me, okay? Therefore, the algorithms are not noted in such a way, usually with uppercase letters. In this case, F, capital F, would be rotating it clockwise. And the F prime would be rotating my front face counterclockwise. So capital F followed by a prime, okay? Same thing with the upper face. Even though it's facing upwards, I'm still thinking about it as though, how would it look if I was to rotate this face clockwise? I would imagine that I'm looking at this face from a bird's eye view, and my clockwise rotation would be just like this, okay? So U is this way, U prime is in the opposite direction, which means that it is counterclockwise relative to the perspective as though if I was to look at this face directly. Those are the important aspects. We're now going to go ahead and create what's called our daisy, just to review it really quickly. And we're going to make sure that we do our step number two. This is my, let's pretend this is my bottom face, okay? It's got my square stickers on it. And um, I want to make sure that all of my bottom first floor is completed. It is right now. I'm going to rotate the cube in such a way so I can tell you again what is the idea of the daisy. Step one was about creating the daisy, which means that our opposite center sticker, two opposite center stickers are going to be used to create the daisy. Again, those two sides do not rotate or, or the, the perspective or the relationship between the two opposite center stickers always remains the same, even though we rotate the cube quite a bit. Therefore, if my bottom sticker right now is the square, those are going to be the textures or the colors of my petal around the cube. So step one was about having choosing a center sticker and surrounding it with the opposite center sticker color or texture so that it has four petals around it. It is a pixelated version of the daisy. This was step number one. Now, in step two, we're going to take this and we're going to convert it to a cross. I will describe it in detail so that we can have that in our mind's eye, so that you can do this with your eyes closed. My upper face, the one that has the daisy on it, is going to rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, so I can move this just about any way I want. And this is important. Rotating my upper face that has the daisy on it will help me to make sure that my edge pieces that are the petals will be dropped down in the proper position towards the bottom so that my step number two is complete and that the edge pieces are in their final resting place. By rotating my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise, it will allow me to make sure that my so-called petal or the edge piece on the third floor can be aligned and positioned where I need it to be. My upper face 
has the edge pieces or the pedals that have two stickers on them. The upward facing sticker of my edge piece, which is so the so-called petal of the flower, is facing upwards. Okay, so that's on my upper third floor. As I'm examining my edge piece, it has two stickers to it and I want the outward facing sticker on my upper third floor, the second sticker of that edge piece, to be lined up in such a way that it matches to the center sticker of an outward facing side. So here I have an upper face edge piece that is now rotated so that it is aligned and matches to the center sticker on the front face. Therefore, I have a button number five on my front face as compared to numerical keypad matching the button number eight. And once it does, I can now go ahead and do what's called the F2 move, which means that I'm taking my front face and rotating it twice. And it doesn't matter if I'm rotating it clockwise or counterclockwise, because if I take my F2 prime, so to speak, that I'm rotating the cube twice in a counterclockwise direction. And if I go back, and I take my same face, my front face, and rotate it F2, again in a clockwise direction, which is the opposite, I will have the exact same effect. At this point in time, I have my edge piece matching to the center piece on my front face, and it also matches to the center sticker on my bottom face. This edge piece. The two-sided edge piece is exactly where I want it to be. It is starting to form the idea of a cross on the bottom, okay? And to create a cross on the bottom, we will have the center piece surrounded by four stickers, just like we did with the daisy. Again, my upper face will be rotated clockwise and counterclockwise until my edge piece on the top face, that is the petal on the top face, is going to have the outward facing sticker on the third floor matching to the center piece on an outward facing side. So I have button number five and button number eight matching on my front face. I've switched my faces now so I have a different texture on my front face. Now that I have my button five and two matching, again, I'm going to rotate that face twice. That means F2, okay? We're getting used to the idea of how to use the algorithm notation and how to describe it. I still have two more edge pieces at the top that are still petals that used to be part of my daisy. And I'm essentially taking the petals away from the daisy. If you ever remember the game as a child playing, he loves me, he loves me not. Um, and uh, basically taking away all the petals of the flower, that's exactly what we're doing. We are, we are disassembling our flower. My edge piece, again, that's on the third floor, that is still part of the daisy, has the petal that does belong on the bottom because it matches the center sticker on the bottom. The second sticker, the second side of my two-sided edge piece, needs to match to an outward facing side and it does i have a center sticker button number five matching to button number eight on my new front face and now that it does i'm going to rotate my front face twice so again i'm adding another piece to the bottom which is my edge piece and it's starting to create a cross on the bottom i have one last petal on the top that was still part of the daisy in step number two that will be taken to the bottom. I'm going to rotate my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise to make sure that my center sticker of my new outward facing side matches to the top third floor edge piece. I have one last petal left at the top. I have taken all of my three edge pieces that were on the top and put them down on the bottom. And now I have my last petal that's still up at the top on the third floor of my pretend building. Remember, this is my upper face. That's where the daisy was, and I'm going to take the daisy from the top and convert it to the cross on the bottom. My two-sided edge piece that is on the upper third floor has two stickers to it. Yes, the upward facing sticker is the petal, and it does match to the bottom, so I'll be taking that in just one minute. 
And I want to make sure we understand that button number 5 and button number 8, as compared to a numerical keypad, on my outward facing front face right now, is matching. Therefore, I have a Velcro piece in the center. That's button number 5 on the front face. And it matches to that edge piece that's still on the top that was part of my pedal, my last edge piece on the top. If it matches, then I'm ready to take it from the top and bring it to the bottom. Once again, I have button number eight as compared to numerical keypad on my front face matching to the center sticker button number five. This means that I am ready to take it down from the top and drop it down to the bottom. When I double check the bottom, I can feel that the bottom edge piece does not match to the center sticker. Therefore, that's exactly where I want it to go. I'm going to take my front face rotated twice so that the edge piece on the top is now on the bottom. And I will be able to confirm that my button number two on that same front face that has the Velcro stickers to it matches to the center piece on that front face. Therefore, my two Velcro pieces are matching in button position number two and five as compared to an numerical keypad on the front face. And the best part is that my edge piece is now in its final position. How do I know that? Because my edge piece now has the bottom center sticker matching to this, to this uh, one side of the edge piece, and the other side of my edge piece is matching to the other front facing center sticker. This is what I want. I want my edge pieces to be matching to both sides as I solve for them. And this is the purpose of step number two, and that is to create a cross on the bottom face. Therefore, if I look at my bottom face, it will have the button center sticker, button number five, as compared to numerical keypad, and it will have the exact same texture or color in button number two, just below it, and button number eight, just above it, and button four and six. Therefore, the cross and the daisy are similar. The only difference is that the daisy has a different center sticker. I have completed my cross on the bottom, and when I look at my bottom face, my stickers, as compared to numerical keypad, are number two, four, five, six, and eight, and they are matching. And this cross is extremely important because now it's on the bottom of the face, on the bottom face, I should say, and it stays on the bottom for the remainder of the solve of the cube. Now that we've discussed the idea of rotating clockwise and counterclockwise, we are working towards finishing our first floor and being able to communicate this information using algorithms. An algorithm is simply a way of notating and describing how each face is going to be rotated, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And keep in mind, our reference point that is the bottom face will remain the same even if you're rotating your cube all the way around so that your outward facing sides do change. The upper face will remain as is and the bottom face will remain as is with the bottom cross when we are solving using the CFOB method which is using the cross as we just did, completing the first floor and then using orientation and permutation. Step number three will be about solving the corner pieces on the first floor. That will be the purpose of step number three. For now, we are happy to have our cross made. We are ignoring any corner pieces that are done. Remember, if we were solving for stickers, we would care only about one face to be solved. However, if I want to solve my first floor and I'm solving the entire cube, I want to solve for the pieces. So my corner piece that I have here in the corner is not matching because it doesn't match the, all the center stickers that it needs to. Therefore, the three-sided corner piece, in order for it to be in its final position, as we will be working on in step three, will need to be matching all the center stickers of the faces that it's affecting. Therefore, step number three will be about making sure that we take our corner piece from the third floor to the first floor and it will be matching to the bottom face and the other two outward facing sides. That could be the front and the 
right or it could be the front and the left. Enjoy solving the cube and I will see you soon. You stop recording video. Welcome back to the series on how to solve the cube. We just finished our step number one, which is to make the daisy, the classic move that everyone knows how to do. It's easy breezy, anybody can do it. You can do it with your eyes closed. And we're going over the C fob method, which is the creating the cross on the bottom, first floor, orientation and permutation. We have chosen this metallic centerpiece to be our top piece, or to be our top face, I should say. Our bottom face is the one that has the centerpiece with a felt. We're now going to take the daisy and convert it to a cross. The daisy from the top will be converted to a cross on the bottom. Here is how we do it. We simply rotate our upper face. Why? So that the outward facing edge piece on the top is going to match in two ways. On the top face, the daisy petal or the daisy sticker is going to go along with all the other four stickers that create the petal on the top. I'm going to take my position number two if I compare this to an America keypad. So there's my number one, this is my number two, my number three. Number five is in the center, this one here. And I'm going to focus on edge piece number two. This is the one on the top face. If I look at the same edge piece, other sticker, it will be on my front face right now. So my upper face has the daisy, my front face has another sticker. The texture or the color of this sticker for that same edge piece needs to match to my center piece on the front face. Now that I have it lined up, I'm going to take it the edge piece from position number eight to position number two. So here is the numerical keypad again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is my number eight. I'm going to take my number eight, rotate it front face twice, so that I've taken it from the top to the bottom. So it is now below the center piece on the front. My edge piece now matches in two ways. It matches to the center piece on the front and the center piece on the bottom. This is what I want to do with all of my so-called petals of the daisy on the top. I'm going to rotate my upper face clockwise or counterclockwise until the outward facing sticker of the edge piece on the top row matches the center piece and I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to flip the front face twice, rotate it twice, so my edge piece goes from the top to the bottom. There is the edge piece again on the bottom and we're starting to form a cross. We're going to repeat the same thing. Upper face, edge piece needs to match to a center piece on an outward facing face. I have the center piece on my front face matching to the button just above it. This button or this edge piece on the top also has the petal which is still part of the daisy. By rotating it 180 degrees and taking it from the top to the bottom, I have taken the petal that was on the top part of the daisy and I've made it part of the cross on the bottom. If I examine my bottom, I notice that I have the center piece and the three other edge pieces that are starting to form the cross. I need one more. Let me go back to my top face again. Here is my edge piece that I will be taking from the top to the bottom. This is the last piece. I will still double check that it matches to the center sticker on my front face. Okay, so I keep rotating my cube so that I keep changing my front face. Now I have a new front face that matches the center piece in position number five to position number eight. And I'm going to take it from the top to the bottom. How? That's right, I'm gonna rotate it twice by rotating my front face clockwise or counterclockwise. This time I'm going to take my front face in the opposite direction. So I'm going to do it in a counterclockwise direction, but it doesn't matter because it will end up exactly where it is. In other words, if I do front face turn F2 clockwise or counterclockwise, it ends up in exactly the same spot. And voila, this is step number two. 
creating the cross on the bottom. Congratulations. Now that you have the cross, this will stay on the bottom of your face for the entire solve. This is going to be a reference point. From now on, this is your bottom face. As I mentioned, the centerpiece on any face will determine the final color. We will be solving our first floor or the bottom face with the outward facing stickers. That will be part of step number three. Continue watching this series a little section at a time and I hope that you enjoy making the cross and that you keep solving the cube because it is a gift that keeps on giving. I'll see you soon.